All right, in three, two, and one. Hey, everyone, what's up? Welcome to another week of And We're Live. This is the show where we talk all about live streaming and video for your business and beyond. And we're super excited because we've got some great stuff on tap for you today. It's not just me, though. No, not just me. It's also Curtis from Curtis Brooks Media Productions. What's up, Curtis? Hey, everyone. What's going on? I like how you always show yourself like it's a surprise that you're involved. <laughs> Absolutely. Like every week is a special guest. You know, I I watched the show last night. <laughs> Medioscope had to watch a replay. Okay. It was hilarious. Yeah, it was hilarious. It was, hilarious. <laughs> it, it was a fun show. It was <laughs> it really was a fun show. So the hilarity does ensue. Absolutely. Absolutely. So let's see uh what's going on and and who's here. Yolanda Lattimore is here from the ATL. And by the way, folks, if you notice I'm in a different place, that's because I am. I am in the ATL doing some production that would be Atlanta. So Yolanda Lattimore, welcome and thank you so much for being here. Thank you to everybody on YouTube, also on LinkedIn Live everybody on Periscope. And I have to ask you this. Are you Curtis Brooks Media Productions on Periscope? Because I'm trying to find you. I can't. Uh, Curtis Media Pro. Oh, you. Because <laughs> I'm like, where is he? Because I'm using, trying to use my computer this time and I can't find you. Hashtag B-U- Hashtag what? Hashtag B-U-C- you know, <laughs> we're not going to do that today. We are not doing that today. <laughs> okay. And I see you. I just found you. I just found you. All so right, awesome. yeah, yeah, yeah. So what's up to everybody on uh, Periscope as well. All right. Anything new or exciting you have to uh, share with us, Curtis? Uh, yeah. Well, we're going to be talking about, um, what are we talking about, Dr. Tachi? The thing that you put in the title. <laughs> yeah, right. Sound and yeah, microphones. The, yeah, you control your environment and then selecting a mic. You had one job, Curtis Brooks. I know. And one I, job, and you couldn't do that. And I'm, I, <laughs> yeah, did you ever see that uh, meme where the uh, hot dog buns? No. It, was, it actually was hot dog. No, it was hamburger buns, and it was actually hot dog buns. <laughs> it was, the bag was labeled hot dog buns, and it was like hamburger buns. Just, and the caption was like, you had one job. <laughs> I've never <laughs> seen that. But I would hope that whoever is watching would look and see these don't look like hot dog buns. Yeah, you would think, but. But no. Okay. Anyway, but so what's up? This will really mess them up now. I know, right? <laughs> really throw them off. <laughs> really throw you off. Fantastic. All right. So, just in case those of you watching on Periscope, I'm noticing something a little weird, glitchy going on. So, just in case you're noticing that too, that's what's happening. But maybe it's cleared up now. So, I just noticed something. Or it was, yeah, it, I'm seeing it again. It goes from this like looking like a negative image mm. of us back to regular. So, there's something Is glitchy it on going on. Yeah, on Periscope. Is it like green? Uh, no, it looks like a negative. You know mm. how a negative right, image right, looks right, like. Right, right. So it goes back and forth okay. between. So just letting you all know that are watching on Periscope, if that's what's if that's what's happening, we're still here, but it's glitchy right. for some reason. Welcome to Periscope. <laughs> but in any case, you are welcome to jump on any of the other platforms if you can't see well. We are at Curtis Brooks Media Productions on YouTube and Facebook live as well. So you could jump on over there. And you can also on my LinkedIn page, I am Chitachi A. Egwu. So you can watch on LinkedIn as well if Periscope is giving you too much grief, because I can imagine it would be giving a little bit of grief. <laughs> like they're like, Chachi's on. So. <laughs> you know what? <laughs> <laughs> right. All right. So we're going to get into it because we don't. Oh, Gary Lanham. Hey, how are you? He is on Facebook Live. Gary, good to see you. And I have to give you congratulations. Gary mm. is one of very few uh, people that has been selected for the Forbes Real Estate Council. So he is an officially a Forbes Council member. So Gary, congrats to you. Congrats. Well deserved. Absolutely. Well, well, congrats, well Gary. deserved. And don't forget about us small folk down here when you big Forbes people <laughs> do think don't forget about us. <laughs> oh, yeah. Something really spooky going over at 
Facebook. Yeah, you see it. what's happening? Not Facebook, yeah. on um, Periscope. I mean, Periscope, yeah. Yeah, it's very Halloween-ish. So I don't know what's going on. Uh, Periscope people, so you're welcome to join us on any of those other platforms that I mentioned. And I'll come back at some point and talk about it. So what we're going to do is get rolling. And today we are talking about sound and microphones. Now, we talked a little bit about that two weeks ago, but... We're going to rehash a little bit about that and talk more in depth about sound and microphones. So the big thing we're going to talk about before we even get to microphones is controlling your sound environment. And that's one of the things you need to do before you even think about, oh, let me you know, use my microphone and all that. You have to make sure that your sound environment is right to begin with. Right, Curtis? That's correct. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you for all your help. So we're going to talk about controlling the sound in your environment. And so there's something that you said yesterday, Curtis, that was really poignant in terms of fixing it. Share, can you share that with us? Because I thought that was really good. I don't remember what I said. The more you try to fix. Oh, yes, 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 uh... yes, yes. Well, you know, I, I discovered this piece, especially with sound, is that because of my professionalism or my my or lack thereof go ahead uh yeah trying to be you know, just <laughs> that flair of just kind of making sure everything is perfect i should say but uh yeah so a lot of times when you're working with sound when you're trying to uh remove every bit of noise that you know that you uh potentially can see or as a distraction to your audience uh it's interesting with the sound because at some point as you, remo as you have removed the sound or different um possible different distractions uh, within the audio, as you try to clear the audio up, you'll find yourself almost hearing certain things or your, your mind will be playing tricks on you because what happens is that because we're so accustomed to sound mm -hmm. in, in every aspect uh, aspect of life, if you will, because the way sound, sound is, you know, it just, it, it takes place in different layers. So it, uh, for instance, like a, a sound that a dog can hear that humans can't. So they they take place in different layers, but for as far as us humans, when we're trying to fix uh, repair sound, a lot of times, it happens where when you're removing that sound, you can try to get it so perfect to the point where you'll actually be hearing things and thinking that you're hearing sound, hearing uh, different sounds or different noises are within that uh, audio track that you're uh, uh, maybe uh, doing some edits to. Mm -hmm. You might hear that noise, but it's actually not there. So. Uh, we're going to be talking about later on, we'll be talking more about the ambient noise too. Yeah, you know, th the whole thing is that that's really interesting that mm -hmm. you said sound exists in different layers. Absolutely. Absolutely. Because mm -hmm. like, like you were saying, the song, the, the sounds that like a dog can hear, or even right. the sounds that you hear, if you are still for a moment, yes. you're going to hear from, for example, birds chirping. Yes, you yes. may hear something rattling, somebody rattling in the kitchen. Mm -hmm. You may hear down a ways a little right. bit, a lawnmower going. So right. that's several layers of sound. Really and that's is. why when you really watch is. a film, you're mm -hmm. going to notice yes. all the different layers of sound. And that's why, you know, you could tell somebody who really didn't take time with the sound when they're right. making a film, because you, it just sounds flat, but Absolutely. real life sound has different layers. And this is what you have to think about in terms mm -hmm. of, you know, when you're playing with sound and editing, when you're trying to control your environment, because you know, event eventually and inevitably, you will be playing with sound in your environment. That's so, right. so yeah, no, that's excellent that you said that it exists in layers. So think about that. Sound exists in layers. Serena Wills, what's up? Thank you for being here at work at that. Thank you. <laughs> we appreciate you. <laughs> we I love all Thanks, of Serena. you who play hooky at work while you're right. at work and watch us do our stuff. We absolutely love it. So there's another thing that you have to think about. And I said this from the beginning, besides the fact that sound exists in layers, layers of layers, right? Mm -hmm. Layers of layers. <laughs> Absolutely. Absolutely. They exist in different um, realms. Mm -hmm. You also have to think about the fact that it is easier to do a little bit of cleanup or none at all than to have to fix something that is sounding horrible after the fact. In yes, fact, yes. You might as well throw it away <laughs> in right, some right. cases. Although, you know, sometimes things happen. 
if you're not well planned, you know, this can happen as well. But sometimes things happen at the drop of a dime and you want to go and record this live stream of something that's happening there. And you're not sure of the sound because it, you really can't monitor your sound on live streams, especially out in the field. So you're just hoping by a wish and a prayer that your microphone and your sound works. You're just hoping, right? So in cases like that, where the story is more important than the sound being 100% pristine, it may be forgivable, right? right For right. a little bit. One thing that people don't forgive well is the sound and <laughs> periscope yeah. people as we say this we forgive us for the picture but this is not <laughs> right, our fault right. we don't know what's going on why we're flashing in and out but uh sound hey serena sound uh is the least forgivable <laughs> of, of everything even if i can forgive your image sound i can't forgive right so Think about the fact that whatever you do, you need to make sure that your sound is clean in the first place so you don't have to go back in editing and fix it after the fact, right? And in certain cases, especially with the live stream, you're not going, you may not be able to fix it after the fact, right? So yeah. go ahead, go ahead. No, I was just going to say it in regards to trying to repair audio, like you said, just trying to make sure that you're, uh, make sure it's done right. Uh, make sure it's done right in the very beginning, because like you said, you may not be able to fix it because at that point, I don't think we mentioned it yesterday. Uh, we talked about or plugins that you might need to add to. And again, that's more cost. But I guess at some point we'll even talk about that. I'm not sure not during this show, but when you're trying to clean up sound after the fact, uh, it requires work. Uh, more work, obviously, and uh, additionally, it would uh, require more plugins or different plugins that you could use to clean the sound. Absolutely, absolutely. Preferable is to make sure your sound is clean right. so you don't have to sit there and play with it afterwards. Right, right. Uh, but if that is not an option, there are, as Curtis said, plugins that you can use to actually work on cleaning up the sound. But you, you know, I'm a fan of doing it right in the first place. And that's, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> that's everything that we've always been taught, like in film school and everything, just do it right in the first place and then you'll have less to clean up. Now, sound design is a different thing and that's something, sorry, that we'll talk of as I make all these sounds. Uh, talk about later. MC, not MC Curtis, sorry. Dr. Vibe is here on the Periscope hey, side Vibe. dealing with all the weird glitch, the flashes that are going in. This is not for Halloween, I assure you. But thank you for being here, uh, Dr. Vibe. And... Once again, let me, before I go on, let, let me introduce us again. My name is Dr. Tachi. This is Curtis Brooks, CBMP, from Curtis Brooks Media Productions. <laughs> and yours we, today. <laughs> get, get yours today, yeah. <laughs> uh, wonderful certification <laughs> that you can get from the Curtis Brooks School of Media <laughs> and other tomfoolery. So <laughs> uh, we talk all about video and live streaming for your business and beyond. This is, and we're live. So we thank you all so much for being here. Bobby Stamps has also joined us on the Facebook live side all the hey, way Bobby. from, I wanna say you're from Riverside, California, but I know you're from uh, California. So welcome, welcome, welcome. All right, so the, the thing, so we've talked about the fact that- Hey, Camille. Oh, it's Camille here, hey. She's on the LinkedIn side. Hey, hey, Camille, how are you? She said, hello, Fab, uh, Fab some too, some. Hello, Camille, hey welcome. Yeah, and if you notice, I am in your city, so I will be giving you a call. <laughs> so uh, the, the, let's talk about, I just wanna talk about really quickly the, the fact that sound exists in layers. So not necessarily with a live stream, you may not have the, be, the ability to do this, but if you're doing some video to post later for social media or to exhibit layers so, later somewhere, think about sound being in layers. Get an additional source of sound, record it. Okay, so remember last week, and I could have brought it but uh, out here, but I didn't. Remember last week we talked about the Zoom recorder? Yes. Yeah. So a Zoom recorder is a recorder. They have they have other types as well. Right. Tascam makes one, but mm -hmm. Zoom is really, Zoom and Tascam are well known, but everybody really goes for Zoom and it's Zoom. great. Yeah, sure. I have a Zoom H4N, they have the Zoom uh, H6N, mm -hmm. Yes, H6N HN6. and, and HN6, right? They switched it. I don't know why they, they switched it. It's H4N, 
and then HN6. So that's the latest oh, version. Okay. Gotcha. Yeah, no, 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 they switched it. I don't know why, but just to make people like me look foolish. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> it, it's, it's, a, it's a beast trying to remember all of yeah, these different exactly. model numbers and things. And guess what? You don't have to. That's why know the model numbers that you need and people will give you recommendations. But unless you're doing stuff like this, nobody's expecting you to memorize the model right. numbers. Don't worry about it. But know that different model numbers have different has different functionalities. So think about that. So the sound in layers, if whenever you can, get an additional source of sound that you record. So take something like a, a recorder like that and get some of the natural sound because what happens is you can use that to layer to make a richer sound in editing. So on track one, audio track one or A1 as it's usually called in audio, uh, sorry, uh, video editing programs, you can put one layer of sound. Uh, track two, the voices. Right, track right. three, something. So you've got this sound the Definitely. way you would hear it in the natural world. Right. And when that happens, people don't get lost in the technical things mm -hmm. of it. They become part of the world that you're trying to create right. with the video or whatever. Now, again, with live streaming, this is this may not work live in the unless you're in studio right. and you're able to do, you know, to have different sources of sound, different microphones pointing in different places, then it's doable. But I think with live, people expect more, I would say a flatter sound than with something that you're recording and then uploading later because you don't have time, right? It's live, so. I, you know, I, I think uh, in addition to what you're saying is that it's overall, it's an experience. Mm. Sound is an experience as well, because if you go to the theater, you know, like a, what is it? Uh, do they have IMAX anymore? Do, do IMAX, they yes, they do. They do have okay. IMAX. That's where I saw uh, Black Panther. Okay, cool. So uh, with the IMAX uh, theaters, uh, one of the things they really promote is the, the sound. You have, uh, especially uh, for those theaters who are preparing their movies uh, in such uh, in such manner, is that you have the sound coming from all different directions. You know, you have the sound almost, you know, at different, probably different movies, maybe like a Star Wars or a uh, Indiana Jones or any mm -hmm. movie, kind of a you know, suspense movie. Right, and action movies. Yeah, exactly. So you have the sound coming from different directions. And so the reason why we enjoy those um, um, going to the theater or an IMAX theater is because of the sound experience. So more so, uh, not just the sound, obviously, but uh, also the, the actors, but the sound is an experience as much as the presentation. Absolutely. Think about it. If somebody th uh, drops a rock behind you or throws a rock behind you, do you right. hear it in front of you? No. Uh -huh. That yeah. you don't in real life, you would hear it behind you and you would probably turn your head to see. So right. that's what that IMAX theater experience yeah. is trying to mimic what would happen in real life. So as close as you can do that with sound in your own right. productions, get several sources of sound, particularly if you're recording. Again, this is not necessarily something you can do with live streaming unless you've got a lot of equipment and it's forgivable not to do it in live streaming because it's live. The news doesn't do it. <laughs> because they don't have the time to do it. So, right. so think of, uh, think about that. So we're just going to go through some other things in terms of this. So before we get to mics, if we have time to get to mics today, we're going to try, we want to talk about controlling your environment. Now, again, do it right from the start, control your environment. So you want to find some place that's as quiet as possible. Okay. However, Sound should not be sterile. If you're doing mm. an interview outside, you wouldn't sound like you are in a sound booth, right? Right. You don't want, I was telling Curtis yesterday that they, at the university I used to work at, they, the university school, which was the high school on our campus, they produced a, a new show daily which is why I would never, when they said, oh, go over there and try and recruit. I'm like, well, what are we gonna recruit them to? They have more equipment than we do. I mean, it was <laughs> despicable, which is why I refused to ever go there and recruit. I'm like, you want me to take the five cameras we have and recruit people that are producing for ABC News? Please, not today. It was embarrassing. Uh, it sounds like it'd be. <laughs> it was, I'm not going over there. Send one of your old other uh, flunkies, not I. So, oh, <laughs> but there was a room that we were in because I did a tour of it and it, the sound was so dead that it mm. almost hurt your ears. Yeah. 
It was weird. Nothing bounced, nothing. That is not what you want because that's not the way sound is in the real world. You need a dead room when you're doing voiceover and you don't want mm. any other extraneous environmental noises to mess with the voices. That's when you would need it. But for mm. something like a live stream, something like video, you want a little bit of dynamic sound, mm. right? Some, what we call in journalism, nat sound or natural sound. Again, birds chirping, water, um, cars honking. That's okay. What you don't want is an overabundance of construction right. and things. So while find the quietest place that you can possibly find, you don't need to find a sound sterile place. Right, right. Yes. I'm waiting for you to, you, did you want to add? I, that's why. What, what, yeah, I was Yeah, gonna, go ahead. I, I, well, I, was gonna add, I saw uh, you, I saw we, you. <laughs> we also talked about, um, or we also talked about yesterday as we're preparing for the show, is that uh, there are some things that obviously that we know that you can't control and that is uh, going to be uh, your complete environment because especially if you um as a uh, uh, dr camille uh, mentioned over on linkedin if you have kids uh, or if you have neighbors above you uh that can be an issue but you can say you know to your children or to people in a household look i'm uh i'm going to be recording at two o'clock. So I need an hour of silence or peace as much as possible. So those are, I think, the, just a, a suggestion in, where you, in a way that you can possibly control your environment and just letting others know that, hey, I'm going to be doing some recording and try to find, as Dr. Tachi mentioned, that quiet place as much as possible. Exactly. And Curtis had a really good suggestion yesterday. So generally in the sound recording world, there are things that you can do to make the sound a little, quote, deader or a little more sterile. Uh, you don't probably want to see these on camera, but what you could do, so see the way mm. I'm facing, right? The camera's mm. facing me. Behind the camera, you could put us moving blankets, soundproofing right. blankets. You, you can even buy foam soundproofing yes. and put that in front of you. What happens is you, as you talk in this direction, right. it's not bouncing all over the place, right? Same right. thing with, you know, making sure you close doors as well. You can deaden the sound a little more that way. So my thing, we have, you know, different ways that we look at this. I prefer not to have that type of thing showing because I don't want to look like I'm in a sound studio right. or like in a radio uh, production. Some people like that. And I think that's cool. I don't want to look like that. So because of that, I wouldn't put soundproofing all around me probably right. just in front so that it's not as echoey. That also right. comes with uh, picking the correct mic, but we'll talk about that after. Right. Right. What we're trying to do now is control sound as much as possible before you even bring in mics. And Brad Llewellyn is here on Facebook. Hello, Brad, welcome. Hey, Brad. hey there. Thank you for being here. And come to also Mr. Carlogic has come on on the Periscope side. Welcome, Mr. Carlogic. And it's it's really interesting that Camille brings up kids. Like you said, you, you could say, look, you all, this is mommy <laughs> right. or daddy's or uncle or sister's time right. to do this. We need you to be quiet at this particular time. So find out if there's a way that they can be gone during that time. If right. not, then th you just have, you find a way to keep them quiet and keep them, you know, you, you have to control the situation at right. all at, at, as well. So if they know that this is the time to do this, that you do this, then that's it. And however you choose to do, because I'm not trying to tell people how to parent, right, but right. if you want to tell them, hey, if you're quiet from this time, then we will play this game afterwards. Or Dr. We will Camille do does a really good job, though. Of oh, you don't that. hear Pim, but she yeah, also she does a really good job. <laughs> she also knows how to parent well. You yeah, know, yeah, for sure. You, I, I like. Never hear that. And then here's another thing we talked about. Well, look at what time you do things. If mm -hmm. you have children that are in school and you can do it during that time, guess what? That's the time right. you do it. If you have to, you're at work, for example, and this is important to you now, take your lunch break, right? Go someplace like a conference room or whatever and do half an hour of broadcasting and the other half hour for your lunch. Because remember, you're you're interested in doing this. This is something you want to do and nobody is pulling your teeth to do this. So if you find it important enough, then take time to do that, I would say. Absolutely, absolutely. But yeah, it goes back to what we've been talking about. It's just learning your, learning your craft. 
you know so if you're and it doesn't necessarily mean that you need to know you need to know everything about video but it needs it does mean that you need to present yourself in a professional manner if you are trying to coach someone if you're trying to uh, if you're doing a cooking show such yes. as um, um, Yolanda does a cooking show oh yeah Yolanda but, uh, is excellent absolutely, well with the cooking absolutely. show with the, you know she's got it down to a science sure, and sure. she now has particular times that she's actually doing that and here's the thing with the times you know aside from controlling your environment for sound your mm -hmm. audience comes to know this is the time that Yolanda yes. is on doing this, or this is mm -hmm. the time that Brad is on doing this. Mm -hmm. We're going to watch at that time. And we've come to know, you know, especially for me doing Mediascope at, for four years at 6 p.m. Eastern time, people know that I'm going to be there. Right. And if I'm not, they, they slide into my DM saying, I'm sorry. Did you think you had off today? <laughs> right, right. I mean, they really do. And I mean, I had the nerve to put up that we were off. Somebody put boo. <laughs> in the, I was like, wow, boo. So, yeah, so off, but it's a good thing. Yeah, off days. What's that? No sleep for the wicked. <laughs> <laughs> Clearly. <laughs> so uh, that's one thing that you can think about if you have children or there's noise that uh, you can't. Uh, again, you're not always going to be able to control everything. Right. right. This is where a good mic will come in. Go ahead. Well, no, I was going to say is that uh, the closet also is a good place to <laughs> record your audio. Uh, uh, if that's, you know, maybe the, the last ditch effort, I guess. Uh, if you have a big enough closet, then exactly. Lord knows these well, yeah, people here in Atlanta closet, have yeah. house closets. <laughs> right, right, right. So, and, and in fact, sorry to interrupt you, but that's what Mario Armstrong does. If you mm -hmm. know Mario, he has yeah. a huge closet where all his sneakers, and that's where he does his broadcasting. Right. Granted, he has a, a big enough space to be able to do that. So if right. that works, do your closet. But if it's a small closet <laughs> in his video, it may not work. Right, right. You know, small closets work well for audio only. That's yeah, exactly, where I record exactly, stuff exactly. for voiceover. But <laughs> <laughs> you look pretty crazy. You're trying to do a video live stream in the closet. <laughs> with, with the blanket over yeah. your head now, because you know that's the way you get the right, best sound. Right, right. And people will be like, what is this uh, right. bedtime story, spooky stories <laughs> thing going on? Right, right. And, and, and here, and keep in mind, the reason why we're mentioning about either the closet with a blanket over your head or just... Uh, using these soundproofing uh, panels or a moving blanket. The reason why we're mentioning that is because the clothing, the clothing, the cloth or the fabric will help to reduce or capture the, uh, the, uh, the sound waves, because if not any kind of hard objects within the room, the sound waves will bounce off of them. And you sometimes will hear rattling or just other noises that the sound wave is actually bouncing off of. Exactly. That's why you'll hear more echo in a room with yeah. nothing in it than a room right. that's full of furniture and carpeting right. and all of that. So we have a couple of comments. Bobby says, I do early mornings and after my wife goes to sleep to broadcast at the quiet times. Perfect. Per and that's what you have to think about. Maybe mm -hmm. your time is after everybody else goes to bed. Right, and right. even if you say, oh, well, people might not be up, your audience will follow you. If that's the time you broadcast and you make it a point of the, well, if you want to catch me live, it's got to be at 11 p.m. You will get people. You will get people to be there, definitely. And then... Brad says, gives a whole new meaning to coming out of the closet. Well, it sure does. <laughs> it, it absolutely does, Brad. You're right. You're right. Bobby says, uh, create a snowfall atmosphere, uh, so somber sound. Yeah, absolutely. I think there are so many things. And then Camille says, when I was still at the university, my lunch break, break was a recording hour. Exactly. That mm -hmm. works too. Schedule and say you're out and close the door. Even if I was in, some, I would just close the door sometimes. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but, but exactly. <laughs> you have to let them know, look, if these are things that are important enough to you, your lunch break is your time. They're not, they should not be coming. You have to set parameters. And if that is something that's important, do it. Go ahead. That's essentially what I was trying to say in kind of a roundabout way yesterday is that that word that you, should, uh, you just used moments ago, setting parameters and say, hey, I'm off limits up until this time, you know? Exactly, yeah. exactly. Mr. Carlogic is waving at us on Periscope. Hey, and there. again, Periscope people, we're sorry for this flash mob that's going on. We don't know what's happening, why it's flashing on and off, but. Is there, is there uh, our uh, 
mandated filter? Yes, this is a new <laughs> filter. <laughs> See, if we had faked the funk in the first place, this may have worked, but no, it's not working now. Okay, so as quiet as possible, but keeping in mind that you want natural sound, so dead sound or no sound is not necessarily what you're after for right. video and live streams, just quiet, not no right. sound, right. right? And we talked about the soundproofing in front. That's a way to prevent your voice from bouncing all over now. You don't want to buy the soundproofing foam to put on the wall? I understand because it's not cheap. So no, what you can not. do, comforters work super yes, well, absolutely. people. Absolutely. Get some thick comfortable. Look, you don't even have to go to the thrift store, buy some comforters mm. and some blankets, and you can deaden the sound that way. Put those on the wall. Nobody is asking you to buy um, a Gucci comforter to put right. on your wall. Right. You shouldn't be spending any more than twenty dollars, and that's even too much. I mean, yeah, you can. Well, I don't know if you personally want to go to the thrift store. Why or, not? You're putting it on the wall. Sense? Okay, well, look, that's why. That's why you all spend too much. The thrift store is everything. Yeah. Go yeah. to a thrift shop. You you can wash these comforters or blankets definitely, and then put them on your walls. Because when, if it comes to buying something brand new to put on your walls. And using this, which is not, you know, badly used. So, and here's the thing. So with thrift stores, okay, maybe your concern is bed bugs. No, they have to, uh, they have to do a check for all of that. So you're not going to have a problem with that. As long as they go through an 11 step process. At the thrift stores? Is that what you I don't know if it's 11 step, <laughs> but they go through a process. Uh, it's not AA. <laughs> okay. They, um, step program. they don't go through a 12 step process. <laughs> they go through, I don't know how many steps that you, but they thoroughly check to make sure that, um, that everything is fine. So I do understand concerns with that type of thing. Right. So if you want to go ahead and buy something new, then go ahead. I would not. That's this is just a, a cheaper way of doing it. Or if you want to go ahead and invest in the soundproofing because this is what you want to do anyway, then do it. Do it. Definitely. So moving on. Let's talk more about. Hold on. Trying to see. Um, oh, you were talking yesterday about the seven of uh, the seven habits of highly effective people. Yeah, I wrote that I, down. Talk hmm. about that. Okay. It it, it actually kind of goes back to uh, kind of just mentioned it vaguely before just a moment ago. But okay. anyways, it's essentially uh, about the idea or concept where it's that there are things that we can control and there are things that we can not control. But the more the more things that we give are the more the more often we give over to the things that we cannot control the more we find ourselves in a place where things are just chaotic. Mm. Mm. But the less we spend time, and it was, again, I'm kind of saying it, it's definitely not paraphrasing, but uh, it's by Stephen R. Covey. Oh, he's the author of the book, but any event, but the less we spend time minding other people's business, if you will, or Preach. dealing with things, <laughs> dealing with things that are outside of our control, the more time, the more we have control. And it's, it may sound weird, but just really think about it. Yeah, it's almost it's, it's like- pretty, It's pretty powerful. It's almost like, you, you know, um, for those people who may be uh, Christian, they have that serenity prayer. Mm -hmm. um, God grant Absolutely. me the serenity to accept yes, the yes. things I cannot change, courage mm -hmm. to change the things I can, and the wisdom to know the difference. If you sit there yeah. trying to change Absolutely. things that you don't have, that wastes time. It's a tremendous time sure. waster. So let's compare that to sound, right? The Franklin Covey thing, the mm -hmm. serenity prayer, Control yes. the things that you can absolutely control, absolutely. right? Sometimes there's going to be noise in the background. Damn it. If your your message is more important, there are ways to get around it. So I guess the thing is don't mm. spend an inordinate right. amount of time over things that you really can't control. That's absolutely. in life and that's with sound. Absolutely. Good stuff. Good stuff, Dr. Henry. Good stuff for you, Dr. Um, Curtis. <laughs> C B N G. You were the one that brought attention to that. So But yeah, I mean, because it's it's important because like, you know, I I think overall, every last one of us are on a mission. Yeah. Seriously, every last one of us are on a mission. And if we allow different things that are just outside of our control, and one of the things I like with uh Dr. Camille is that when she's doing her different broadcasts, even if the kids are making noise, 
she does not give attention to it. And so, because that's what they're looking for. Well, ex exactly. <laughs> that's what exactly, they're looking for. Exactly. And so, I mean, and she, I mean, she does it so smooth. And I think in a, it's just a, a good tip or a suggestion to follow is because if you, if you make reference to her or just, you know, you know, just get yourself uh, distracted by it. You, now you've lost your audience. Yeah. You know, you've lost a point or perhaps, you know, lost track of what your, what your next point were, was or what you were trying to say. And your audience now can't make a connection with what the heck are they, is she talking about or he talking yeah, about. Yeah, 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 yeah. So as much yeah. as you can control, right. control the time, yeah. speak to people, let them know that this is the time you're doing things. Sometimes though, you know, the lesson here is that you don't have control over everything. So right. control the things you can. Absolutely. And don't give attention to the things that you can't really control or right. that just think about that may not be the time for you to be doing this. That may be another message saying, you know what? Absolutely. Well said. Great Perhaps point. I need to do this at another time. If this right. is too much right now, like Bobby does after people go to sleep or before right. people wake up, like, uh, you know, people don't want to wake up. People would rather be groggy, so make five o'clock right. in the morning or whatever the time is that before everybody else is up to do it, or like Bobby said, after they go to bed. So those are excellent. Carlos Phoenix is here. Welcome, hey, Carlos. Carlos. He hey is there. on the Facebook Live side. And then Bobby says, old moving blankets. Um, hmm. uh, you could, yeah, you could use old moving blankets. Absolutely, those work for sound, definitely. And is that what you use? And then Carlos also says, well, another thing that wastes time is when people relive their past and, and use it for their future. Well, hello. Is this a motivational speech? <laughs> I know, right? <laughs> That's good stuff. Good stuff. Good, good stuff. stuff. Absolutely. Today you get lights and motivation, not lights, but sound and motivation. <laughs> Encouragement. <laughs> Encouragement. Yes, yes. That's what we're here for. That's what we're here for. Yeah, we, I, we probably should sprinkle a little bit of encouragement with everything we do. You know? We, we actually, well, we are encouraging you to do, by doing this, we're saying mm -hmm. you can do this. You don't have to wait to, for permission to put your content out there anymore. Mm -hmm. You don't have to beg NBC, ABC, CBS, Fox, CW, or any of these other networks to put yes, your stuff yes, on. Yes. You have the power to put your mm -hmm. stuff out there. Now, again, we all know distribution is a bigger animal to fry. Animal right. to fry? <laughs> Whatever. Animal to fry. <laughs> no sponsorship from Peter from you. <laughs> well, we were we looking for Peter sponsorship? <laughs> yeah. Anyway, <laughs> frying animals. Frying <laughs> animals. That's a bigger animal to fry. Okay. <laughs> this is, so distribution is a different thing, but right. on its core or at its core, you absolutely can do this. And I am so yes, in yes. love with the concept of putting your message out there through I live streaming and th through video. Absolutely. I mean, this is what the hell I went to school for because I wanted to tell stories. And I, I yes. love to hear other stories. And I implore you all to really use this technology that's free, free to put right. your story out there. Please do. Because I, I, I love it. Go I, ahead. I think so. For so long, we've allowed other people to to tell our narrative, and our narrative was seen through the eyes of someone else. And, and you know what? Still is for the most part. I mean, and, it, it is. And this has nothing absolutely. to do with just ethnicity or race. This is everybody. Well, I'm absolutely. You know, absolutely, this is everybody. Um, there's something in media, and Camille, you know this. There's something uh, called agenda setting. So agenda setting, the agenda setting function of the news is the fact that the media don't tell us what to think, but they tell us what they think about through what they put out there, the agenda, mm. right? Right. So if they want you to think about group X or person X as this, these are the types of stories they put out there. It's mm. not always necessarily intentional, but it often is. And so mm. that translates also into our stories as human beings being told by others. And when other people shape your stories, that's who you become, unfortunately, well, in the I, eyes of I, others. Go ahead. Well, no, and, and, and that's that's my point. I, I think, you know, like you said, it's not necessarily uh, uh, eth ethnicity. Uh, uh, I guess uh, matter, but it is that for so long we've had so many people telling our story, and so if you have an opportunity to create your own video about a subject matter or topic that's important to you, and you can make a connection with your audience, do so. And absolutely. So that's you know. 
Absolutely, absolutely. Yolanda mm -hmm. says um, Periscope is doing Halloween early, so she jumped <laughs> over to right, right. <laughs> to Facebook. I understand. I don't know what's going well, on. You didn't, you didn't like that filter? <laughs> <laughs> the Halloween filter. <laughs> Uh, you keep hearing the Halloween music. This is, I, you know what? <laughs> but here's the thing that the, all the lesson in this is also that technology can and will fail you, right, and right. Uh, we don't have control over it. Right. So all we can do is keep going, right? So right. <laughs> the wisdom to know the difference. We, we there's nothing we <laughs> right. can do the hell about that. So, so we're gonna keep going. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> so and with that, we're going to keep um, going. So I love that seven uh, seven habits of highly effective, effective people, people. Mm -hmm. yeah that that reference that 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 is just for video for for, yeah, for live life. streaming and for life Absolutely. in general and guess what video and live streaming is life it's telling stories so you we we talked about how you deal with uh, extraneous noise and, and doing that and one way to do that after you control the environment for as much noise as you can physically mm -hmm. the next thing to do is then worry about your mic right your mics right. are always important good sound is important but good sound doesn't mean anything if you have a great mic and you're in a construction zone so control <laughs> right. your environment first and right. then bring in the mic so that brings us to the next part let's talk about um the types of mics so guys get your pencils and paper does anybody use pencil anymore yeah no oh, i like no pencil pad. and no pad. pad i know i like pencil because i you know i'm an artist so i like to draw so you know i always would keep pencils around so and yeah, Car artist um carlos is an artist too so i know he keeps pencils go ahead but yeah but carlos does more digital too though right he does know, but he is actually like a painter, oh, okay, and a, okay, he is okay. bomb. He's oh, yeah, like, I, I've seen some of his stuff. Some great he's stuff. really good. Absolutely. No, he actually draws and paints. Okay. So okay. he's a, a real okay. artist. Okay, cool. So, okay. so yeah, I know you keep pencils around as well. All right, so so we're going to talk about, let's talk about the three different, uh, th there are more than three different types of mics, but let's talk about some of these more, quote, they're not necessarily tabletop mics, but if you are here, it's going to be a tabletop mic, like you're doing something like this. All right, so the first type of mic that I uh, want to talk about or that we want to talk about is the dynamic mic. You have the photo for that so that folks can see what it's like. Yeah, that's it, scroll through, because I've <laughs> I'm not scrolling through this time. Oh, so, oh. So which one do you want to, which microphone? The dynamic microphone. Which one do you have as dynamic? There's several of them. It says no, but it says dynamic in the title. Okay, one second here. That's... No, the dynamic is the sure, um, that should be the sure. It looks like a handheld mic. There you go. Yeah. Okay, thank you. All right, so the... This is uh, one, the SM85, SM, sorry, SM58, 58. not 85, 58. This is a popular one, right? This is the type of mic that you would, a, a lot of singers use this, vocalists. If you go to an event and somebody's using a mic, it's usually going to be a dynamic mic, you know, of some sort. So what, what exactly is a, a dynamic mic? So dynamic mics, they're, they're known as the workhorses of the microphone world, okay? They're relatively inexpensive, like this one I believe is about $63. So they range from like the 30s, but again, you get what you pay for. <laughs> so, uh, but this is about $63 and it's a great mic. They're really durable. This is why you see them banged up so much because people mm -hmm. have dropped it. I don't, I'm not a fan of what people say, drop the mic, because you can mess up your mic that way. But people have done it and they still work and they sound really good on most common sources in recording. Um, so what this does is it uses a movable induction coil, you know, like a coil, a, a metal coil that's suspended in the field of a magnet, all right? And dynamics mics work like a speaker in reverse, basically. So basically, instead of putting the sound out, it brings it in, okay? And so they're really versatile and really affordable. 
great to have in your collection. They have dynamic bikes that are both XLR and have a mini input that would work with your, um, what are we seeing? Yeah, thank you, <laughs> Curtis. Oh, there was a delay, I'm sorry about that. Yeah, oh. oh. Move, me, move me some, adjust, some uh, images around. Yeah, sure. You move them around. Anyway, we're still on the shore. <laughs> on the shore, I apologize. <laughs> That's okay, no worries. Till we get off. Anyway, so <laughs> so this is a this is a dynamic mic. Again, remember it worth the coil is suspended between the magnets, and that's how it works. And again, it's the workhorse of the microphone world. They're relatively inexpensive. This one, like I said, you can pick up for fifty three. Uh, sorry, sixty three dollars. There's uh, the fifty nine dollar one that I often see is still uh, is Audio Technica. You guys have mm. probably heard about the AT. R2100, AT standing for Audio Technica. So the ATR2100 is a really popular mic for podcasters and for broadcasters because it's inexpensive. There's a whole argument between which is better, the Blue Yeti or the ATR2100. So mm -hmm. it really is, when it comes to mics, guys, it really mat what really matters is not what works well with somebody else's voice, but what works well with your own. Right, right, right. I have a Blue Yeti. I don't necessarily like it for my voice. So I'm <laughs> about to buy another one. I have to do too much for it to work well. And I have very particular qualities to my voice. So you have to experiment and listen and see what sounds good with your voice. Wouldn't you say, Curtis? Absolutely. The uh, Blue Yeti is a condenser microphone. And you, although you yes. can... Although you can use, uh, but you can change it. You can change the absolutely. pickup pattern so that it's a not absolutely. a condenser. So well, the Blue Yeti has, has has a number of settings. Right. Uh, yeah. So, but though, be, be it be, the microphone being a condenser microphone, uh, essentially is that uh, although you can power the microphone by USB or um, XLR, uh, it is uh, even though you can change your uh, the pickup patterns you mentioned. It's audio, uh, the source of audio is going to be uh, hugely different from the dynamic microphone, as uh, Dr. Tachi mentioned. And that's because the condenser microphone is going to pick up a lot of noises uh, from the outside. So even though you're, even if you're close up on the microphone speaking into it, you're still going to have, you could potentially have outside noises uh, from within that, that, that pattern, if you will, the, uh, the uh, sound pattern, but with the dynamic microphone, your sound pattern is essentially much smaller. And so if you're off proximity, you won't you know, hear. Uh, yeah, you won't hear as much, but a talented singer who knows how to control the microphone and obviously her voice, uh, their voice, they'll be able to just kind of work that, you know, as a professional, but. Exactly. So, yeah. Exactly. Let me go to the room in case there are any comments. Daryl Hutton, welcome. Thank you for being here on the Periscope side. Uh, to the thank you and welcome to the Halloween uh, <laughs> stream because we don't know what's happening on uh, Periscope. But feel free to ask any questions if you all have because I don't see any questions coming in. But feel free to ask any. Let me look and see if uh, not Facebook, but. Uh, and LinkedIn has any? Okay, I don't see anything on LinkedIn yet, but that's okay. And then Serena Will says, uh, I do. I have an eight-year-old. We use pencils frequently. See? <laughs> pencils right, are right. the bomb. Absolutely. Uh, Yolanda says, waiting for this. Fantastic. Good. I'm glad you are. G glad you are. Okay, and uh, shout out to everybody on YouTube as well. Okay, so as Curtis uh, mentioned, so the next type that is that you can use is a condenser microphone. And again, like you said, the condenser has a propensity to pick up outside noises, regardless mm -hmm. if you change the pickup mm -hmm. pattern. Uh, when we'll talk about pickup pattern in just a bit. So it has a propensity to you know, pick up different noises that you may not want. The, the range is a lot larger uh, with, with condenser microphones. So if you could put up the condenser mic, please. That would be the, no, condenser. That's shotgun. No, that's ribbon. Okay, I got, hold on. Okay. okay. <laughs> Four microphones here. Due to technical difficulties. So the one that no. you just had up. 
Yes. Okay. That's condenser. Let's see. ATR. That's it. Mm. Okay. Gotcha. Mm -hmm. So that's an Audio Technica. Okay. Audio Technica makes really good um, things. So you're not scrolling through, are you? Got all big and bad. I'm not scrolling through today. Mm -hmm. And you see what happens. Well, well the, the names weren't there. They disappeared or something. They disappeared. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> disappeared. Is it this Halloween trick? It's, it's, it's blank periscope. Okay. That filter. That filter. So this is um, this is a great condenser mic. If you I this is actually the mic I have, and it works really well. But again, it does pick up outside noise. I use this with a a preamp. Okay, mm -hmm. which uh, condenses that's the well. It condenses the sound in the mic, but it translates the sound signal into something your computer can use. So it's an XLR and you have to use it with a preamp and then into your computer. But they, there are some condensers that are USB that will plug right. right into your computer. So keep this in mind. When you have more to your cable, the better the sound or the image or whatever will be. So a USB is not a very thick cable, so you'll get good sound, mm -hmm. but the sound won't be as rich as if you're using an XLR cable, okay? It right. just makes sense. Think, think about, for example, when you have cable internet versus through the phone lines, same thing, okay? The coaxial cable, which is old school, but it carries a lot more bandwidth and signal than a phone line will carry. Right. So you're going to get a better signal because of that. Yeah, with the uh, XLR cable, you also have a grounding, um, uh, uh, cable as well, or a uh, point in the cable. So that's the reason why you, uh, when you're using the XLR, you don't get the the ground, uh, the interference, if you will. Correct. So the, the USB or anything coaxial cable, uh, potentially the uh, interference from, from the ground, if you will. So that's. Fantastic. Okay. So Serena has a question. She says, what is a good mic for those who do live streams from their phones and tablets, et cetera? Uh, and not as frequent. I do live chats and stuff, but not every day or week. Oh, that is a really good question. So if you don't mind, I'm going to um, answer that. Now, are you doing, it, let's talk about the supposings. Are you doing this out in the field away from your home? Or are you doing this in your home? Now, because any of these mics that we're giving you will work if you're in a mm -hmm. static stable place, like you have a little studio you set up, it will work in a static stable place. But if you're talking out about being out in the field and, and doing this, so last week we talked about giving good guests or two weeks ago, we talked about giving good guests. And there are, we showed a couple of microphones that will work out in the field mm -hmm. from lavalier mm -hmm. mics, wired mm -hmm. lavalier mics, um, there are wireless ones. I have some that I'll show you today as well. And then also, uh, what else did we talk about? We talked about the labs. We did talk about um, shotguns. So we're going to talk about those. But if you're talking about small, just you want your phone, you want your professional selfie stick, and you want a mic, there is, um, Ro is it Rode? No. Sennheiser? I will find it for you before we end. But there's a mini plug with a directional mic it looks you know like let me show you it looks just like this and will plug into your phone those give amazing sound i'll find it we talked about it two weeks ago but i'll find the exact maker and give it to you actually i think sennheiser does make one for iPhone. yeah is that sennheiser yeah, it's sennheiser. yeah. i was trying to ones, remember yeah. Yeah. yeah so the top of the line in terms of sound mm -hmm. Okay, when we say top of the line, that's all relative. Sennheiser is recognized in the industry as top of the line, and you can also see that it's top of the price. Yes, Rode is. <laughs> is the next <laughs> in terms of that. Then followed by um, Ceramonic. Ceramonic is also very good, but there are all sorts of different things. Again, you know, it really depends on what works with your voice. Right. experiment and see, like I said, there's something that something that I have that I don't think works well with my voice. And then there are other things that work beautifully with the voice. So just uh, do that. Okay. Serena says in my little den, then you could really use any of these mics and set up for whenever you have it. So with the XLR last what, two weeks ago, I showed an iRig preamp, which, which plugs into your, the XLR cable on that, um, the, um, Microphone. Microphone, thank you. And then we'll plug into your phone. Okay. Mm -hmm. So, or you can get one made specifically for that. So this one, and you're not going to hear me from this one that I have is a mini plug. So 
again, this is a, uh, a dynamic mic. You don't really see, you can't hear me that well, but you hear me when it's right here. Okay. So it has a mini plug. It will, this plugs directly into a phone and this is by iRig. You can also use the iRig preamp and plug an XLR microphone into it. And that will plug into your phone or tablet right. with a mini plug. Absolutely. So any of those will work. It just depends on uh, really honestly what you want to spend. But if you're going to be in your den, I would suggest doing it right. Getting something like an ATR 2100 from um, Audio Technica, get yourself a, a mic stand and uh, get yourself an iRig so that it will plug in and you could get really good sound. That's what I would suggest. What about you, Curtis? Yeah, that's a great suggestion. Yeah, good idea. Thank, thank you. Mm -hmm. Thank good you. Stuff. That's why you're my friend. Okay, <laughs> she okay, says, thank right. you. <laughs> okay, great, great, great. Let me see uh, if there are other things we need to answer. Okay, um, Dryer Buzz says, she's been trying to decide on a mic. Do that again, it's plugged into your phone. No, um, I'm on a webcam. So this is actually, this is my setup right now. I have a webcam. This is plugged directly into my computer because I'm using the computer with the webcam. So this plugs into my phone and it works with my computer. This is why I like it, okay? Um, it, it's very directional, okay? So you cannot get too far away from it mm -hmm. uh, unless, and it, the thing about this though, it only has three settings. So if you're looking for something quiet, kind of quiet and then this <laughs> so if you're quiet, looking quiet mode <laughs> quiet mode so if you're looking for something that has a little more range in terms of sound this may not be it but it it works well so dry buzz hopefully you saw saw that um but yeah you know another thing you guys can do if you go back and watch last two weeks ago the replay we went through a lot of the different types of mics that will work like with your phone and mm. But like I said, you can make any mic work with your phone. You just have to have the right connector. Absolutely. The right connector. All right. So moving on, the next type, after we get off of condenser mic, and they're, they're, they're okay, so what I forgot to tell you is that there are um, two types of condenser mics. Large diaphragm condenser, like what you see there, the ATR, uh, mm -hmm. the Audio Technica one. And then there are small diaphragm consent condensers, and we don't have a picture, but the difference is they're slimmer and smaller, okay? Same type of thing, just a smaller package. And then the last one, if you could give me the old-fashioned looking mic, that's a ribbon mic. Scroll through. There you go. So that is called a ribbon mic, and you can see it looks like an old-timey 1940s, although they've gotten much better in construction. Those are the most fragile of all of them. So you can really damage this if you drop it, if you do. So it is it is not sturdy. They're much sturdier than they used to be in the old days, in the 30s and such, but they're still susceptible to being um, broken. So this technology dates back to the early days of microphone, okay? So like the golden age of radio and broadcasting. So again, be careful when moving them or sub um, subjecting them to like really, really super high noise because this uses a ribbon, a thin ribbon of ultra con electroconductive material. And that's suspended between the poles of a magnet. That's how they generate their signal. Not that you needed to know all the technical aspects of it, but just so that you understand the differences in this. Okay, so just be careful when you're handling the ribbon mic. And then you have to, be careful with supplying phantom power because mm -hmm. you can break the ribbon. So I would honestly, for what our purposes, stay away from the ribbon mic. I would go with a condenser or a dynamic for that. That's just me. What do you think? Yeah, I, I think that the, um, the the ribbon mic to actually to repair something like that, if you <sighs> decide to, <laughs> right, right. Uh, yeah, it's a that's a small fortune, but nevertheless. Um, you know, the, the whole point of it is this here is that there are tons and tons of options that you guys can or that you can use in uh, recording uh, for a podcast or a live stream or just uh, pre-recorded video. There are different tons of tons of tons of different options and they're not very expensive. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. the I guess more encouragement for more encouragement is to 
get out there, get it done. Don't think too hard about it. Um, one of the things I, um, I don't know if we mentioned it uh, from uh, any of the shows we've done already, is that what, be it Facebook or even with Periscope, if you need a testing place or forum with uh, Periscope, you can actually create a uh, create a group. And if you have a uh, if you have uh, two Periscope pages or something like that, invite yourself, uh, invite one one uh, profile to the profile you're going to use as your test your your test area. And and if you're you uh, and if you are uh, going to be live streaming or just getting just testing it, you can actually. Uh, create it in a test mode. Absolutely. It's always great to that's way you yeah. that way you can hear Absolutely. how your mic sounds Absolutely. before you go live Absolutely. to everyone. You can Absolutely. do like a private stream right. or any of those exactly. things. Oh, great, great idea. Great idea. And, the, and then uh, just real quick on the Facebook, uh, yeah, on the Facebook on your uh, personal profile, you can actually stream to your to your own self, to yourself, to only me or something. I think that's what it says. So and then so no one sees it. Or or hears it obviously, so you can test your audio, make sure that your your background is sufficient. And it's looking, you know, it's conducive to what you're trying to um, establish. And uh, yeah, so those are just a couple of different ways. And even on uh, YouTube, same way with YouTube. You, if you're want, going to be live streaming to YouTube and you want to test everything out, test things out, create a uh, I think only me or something like that. Make it or make it private. I think it's mm -hmm, mm -hmm. so. Those are just a couple a few different ways you can do that. Absolutely. So on Periscope, Yolanda says, got it, need a mic for the kitchen. So here's the thing. I mm. would actually go maybe with some sort of shot, actually, either a, wi a wireless lav yeah. or a shotgun. Okay. So I was going to say we can cover those next week, but since she asked about it, I guess let's talk about it really quickly and then we can go into depth about it next week. Uh, yeah, yeah. I was going to yeah? say she can have an overhead, and they're not that expensive either. Oh, okay. That's tr well, which mark. is a shotgun, basically. Well, well no, I'm just saying the uh, it, it's a wired overhead, not so much just a um, um, yeah, it's it's a it's a wired one where you you obviously not so much a shotgun, but or in a sense what we um, have on one of the images, but uh, kind of like a like I don't know uh, like a ceiling uh, that hangs from the ceiling. Oh. Kind of like a, uh, let's see here. You could, you could do that. Sometimes um, you see them, sometimes you might see them something like this. Oh, it's you, like the thin thing yeah, that they exactly. use for, um, for theater. Right, exactly. Okay, like they're, those, those they're, theater mics. They're, and uh, one place you might want to check too is Zounds. I, I use them quite oh, a bit. Oh, okay, Zounds. That's yeah. a good. That's a good yeah. one. Yeah, z z z o u n d s dot com. Yeah, I take um, advantage of their different uh, options there. <laughs> oh, good, good. And then yeah. if something's too expensive, you just go on Amazon and get it. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> That's yeah. what I do with B&H, mm -hmm. even though I love B&H. And mm -hmm. then I know that Serena had a question. She said, can headphones also work with the mics too? One time I did a live stream and told everyone not to call me. And the one person I, uh, and then one person uh, called and the interviewer sound muffled. That messed up how I heard him. Yeah. So here, here are the things you definitely need to, this is what I would do. Put your phone in airplane mode and turn on the Wi-Fi, making sure Wi-Fi calling is off. This way you'll be able to use the mm -hmm. internet, but you won't get any calls because right. that's one thing that most places, like with my phone, I'm not able to turn it off completely, but I can put it in airplane mode and that will prevent people from calling me and I just use the Wi-Fi. Now, right. you need to make sure that you have strong enough Wi-Fi <laughs> in order for that to work or... <laughs> right. You can hardwire in, and there are um, attachments that you can buy to hardwire your DSL to your phone. It's just mm. something little that you buy off of, right. of Amazon or wherever you can buy, and then you can hardwire to your phone. So one of those options, but make sure that Wi-Fi, sorry, that Wi-Fi calling is off and that you are in airplane mode, and right. that will prevent that because that is always a problem. Somebody calls and it messes up the sound. Now, what would you recommend as far as the upload? Because uh, the, the download obviously is, is important too, but when you're live streaming, it's important to uh, 
make sure that you have enough on the upload. The upload speeds, yeah. Upload so, speed is- so here's the thing: twelve should be sufficient. Mm. I know in Europe their upload speeds are much faster, yeah. but twelve Mbps should mm-hmm. be good. Right. Because I and, I and I'm saying that because I know sometimes the different packages or uh, you know, especially if you, uh, most of us are have to go through the cable company to get the internet you or, know, phone. To, or, or phone. Yeah, actually, or or phone, but. Uh, if you are, uh, a lot of times they'll, with the uh, different services, they'll say something about, oh, we've, we've got uh, 200 megabytes on the, uh, on the download and that's impressive. But if you're going to be doing live stream, you're going to be concerned about the uploads. So Absolutely. Really I'm so glad you said that. Yeah. That's a uh, very important, even this is, you know, a, an aside, but yeah. yes, the download speed is important for watching Netflix and for those types of things. Mm. So that's also important. However, if you're a live streamer or like a gamer Mm. and you're streaming, you have to pay attention to the upload speed because you are uploading your video to the net. That's what's happening. Mm. So the upload speed is very important. If it's anything below, if it's anything below 10 and 10, in my opinion, is even low, you're going to experience problems. So you want to make sure it's 12 or higher. Mm. So look at that because they may offer you a deal but your uh, upload speed may be two that's not a deal so so, absolutely (laughs) so just be careful with that so let me quickly get to um yolanda's question question you actually you you talked about the um the ceiling mics and they're the same mics that they use for um for theater Uh, the thing is then those require you know a different setup because those are usually plugged into a transmitter into a soundboard so if you want to go simple you could do that but if you want to go simple i would just get something that you could can you put up the shotgun please that shotgun is expensive that's a thousand dollars so that's not what i'm asking you to get that's a that's a sennheiser but that's what a shotgun looks like so the shotgun has a very narrow very targeted sound mm. area so you're not getting a whole lot of extraneous sound you're it, you have to point it directly at the subject to get and when you point it directly at you get this is an example of one this is the road video mic this is a shotgun so for this to work i need to work well i'll hear outside but i will really hear the person that it's pointed at okay so this is another this is one thing that you can use and this this will plug into your phone but see what i have attached to it this is from road this is the attachment that will make it work with mobile so you need this i forgot the exact name but if you message me i'll tell you the exact name of it so this is how it is you put it together and this will now work with your mobile device okay and you'll get good sound so this is the road video mic you could this will work with other shotgun mics as well again remember if you're using a shotgun that has the three prongs the xlr you need to plug it into a preamp and and the the iRig preamp will work with mobile. You just plug it in there and then put it into mobile, okay? So, but this is made for a mini plug. Then the other thing you can use, now, if you, you're doing this seriously, Yolanda, so I would suggest investing in these types of things. Get a wireless mic. This is from Ceramonic. This Mm -hmm. is wireless. And so this is the, actually the body pack. You put this, uh, it runs on batteries, two AA batteries. You clip it to yourself here, string it through so we don't see the black wire, okay, and put it on the back. There's another part that will plug into your phone, again, use that same adapter, or test it, because some of these will work directly with your phone and you don't need an adapter. But if you find it doesn't work, that means you need an adapter, okay? So put the adapter on, and then you can sit that with your phone, turn it on, and you can move around and get great sound. So I would really honestly, wireless is my preferred choice for this. Secondary is a shotgun. So hopefully that was a long-winded way of saying what to do, and I hope you got it. Um, your dryer does, says cool, okay. Does Yolanda, uh, Yolanda, do you have a switcher? Are you using a switcher? I can't remember. I don't know. That's a good that. question. Uh, I know she's using an encoder, um, but I don't know if it's a... Switch. I don't know what she's using. Yeah, because uh, you know, because I know she's. I think she was using several phones, but I was just curious if she, if she's actually able to switch from one shot where she's like over the stove or something like that, or you know, or at the sink or something like that. I haven't seen her do that, but yeah. um, that doesn't mean she's not. And then we're right, going right. to talk about doing that. Right. 
All right. So I think we have sufficiently worn this topic out. Absolutely. And it's a minute, uh, sorry, an hour 12. So we didn't go too far over. So, but I hope you all enjoy this and that you found some value in this. We're going to keep coming to you every week <laughs> or so and uh, doing this type of thing <laughs> or so <laughs> and doing this type of thing. Uh, anything else you want to add, Curtis? Oh, no. Yeah, no, you. I'm good. You, not the other Curtis. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Good. So thank you to everybody who watched on the ghost looking Periscope, the <laughs> Halloween version of Periscope, everybody on YouTube, everybody on Facebook Live, and then everybody on LinkedIn Live. We appreciate you. Thank you so much for being here. And we'll see you here next week at two-ish. Cheers. <laughs> Bye, everybody.